Hello and welcome to Jungle 77.3. Sorry for my voice today, it's uh, not 100%, but it will be later on. Today we're going to be talking about Mr. Beautiful once again, due to that uh, technical difficulties with the video. Hopefully she comes out right away because I'm waiting for her, but I can still talk. Uh, wait. Uh, later on today, I'll be doing a second show on Jungle 77.3. At seven, jungle seven seven three dot com. What that is, it's not going to be monumental Monday this week. It's going to be a tribute show to WWE legend Bobby the Brain Heenan, who passed away last night. Bobby the Brain Heenan to me was a very big legend, and he'll be a huge, huge. It will be a huge honor to give him a tribute show. He'll be sadly missing the world of wrestling. And somebody. So, you know, the interview is just good. Um, I mean, I mean, just. Thank you. And yeah, nice, nice timing. dog. <laughs> and it knows the timing. All right, so we're going to kick it off with, uh, a little notification <laughs> that labels are changing the way. They're going towards uh, special privileges to independent artists. I feel that that could be a very dangerous situation with some labels going to a room of all artists. Yeah, they all deserve a chance, but they need to have a tryout, I do believe. What's your opinion on that? Honestly? I think labels should go for people that have had some work under their belt, that have at least um, performed, recorded, sang on stage, knows their vocal techniques, know how to play an instrument. Don't just take a person and try to make them a star unless, that's, unless they want to do the hard work. Work hard, but so that's just really my opinion. Because I don't need this. This is not working right now. <laughs> um. All right. So, like for labels, like what's your opinion on studio time and how they're going to portray? Like, if you have a deadline to make, if they say you have three months to make a chord, seven songs. What's your opinion on that? Seven songs in three months. Three weeks. Wow. Three weeks. Uh, can we extend that, please? <laughs> uh, not every word, right? And I feel um, like... If they know how to do it, and they end the song, if the songwriting process goes faster than usual, because I can write a song in a day if, if I'm with a very good songwriter. So, uh, honestly... Yeah, I'm sure I can do it in three weeks. I did my, my EP in two days. <laughs> I, 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 did, uh, I did like, well, two and a half days because my boy, I, I did two songs a day and then, and then I did acoustics about three days. But that's not bad, though. Five songs. Well, and you look at things a uh, different perspective and you say that... Yes, you need time to record, but at the same time, they need to be able to get you out at the right time to promote you, right? So, like, for yeah, example, uh, yeah. For example, if you want a new album out the end of the year, you have to have that, that recording by probably mid November so they can start producing it and start advertising for like a Christmas break launch. If that's when they want to release it, yeah, definitely. That's an example, right? Uh, another example would be Easter or, you know, a competitive uh, label would have another competitive artist come out on, they say, July 1st. So they will say, we're going to release you July 1st as well. Canada Day, yeah. <laughs> um, but we do understand that you will be uh, working inside... A huge opportunity um, in Toronto. There's an MS and Multi 
Yeah, Baltimore, MS, and uh, I know, I, yes. Yes, it's happening in March. Has you and Bill Dolly Parker and Janelle? Yes. Um, do you have an opinion on Janelle and how she portrays all these beneficial, beneficial shows? Um, I think uh, it's really nice how su how supportive she is to help the community in that way. Because I, I do a lot of charity work too. So it's nice to bring people together to, to support a cause that, that needs to be heard. So, yeah, it's great. Yes, and you'll also be taking the stage that night with the legendary Hall of Famer, Dolly Parton. Yes. It's great. You know, I'm still trying to still believe it to this day. <laughs> I'm still trying to absorb everything. But, yeah, I'm... I can't wait for for that day because that's when everything's gonna happen. I'm gonna have that big reaction that day, but I'm I'm getting ready for it. <laughs> and uh, the way you the way it is is uh, lots of opportunities are gonna come your way eventually, and this is a big step. Like you have a a singer like uh, Dolly Parton say, "I want her on stage." That says a lot to your credibility. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, I'm sure she supports uh, artists as well. So by her having, by her <laughs> allowing me to be on her stage, it, it's really nice of her to share it with me. So, yeah. If we have any of the viewers listening to it now, feel free to ask Sabrina any question you want. Well, maybe not any question you want, but 95% of them. Um, and she'll be much obliged to answer them, most likely. But for now, um, we need to find some fun questions. If you had to choose, if you had to choose. Um, pr Princess Gulat says, hey, bro. Oh. Do you, do you know him or her, princess? I don't know. Okay. No guys are the princess. I know. I don't know. I just said that randomly. I need a secret. That's not a pretend name. That's her real name. She I know. She's the name princess. I was like, wow. Um, <laughs> well, Holly <so> thinks. <laughs> yeah, well, she's always doing that. Um, so with opinions, we're looking at uh, huge, huge, huge publications and so I can't get to the comment zone it says list of viewers so I can't see any comments anywhere um but anyway we want to take a look at the uh, independent circuit and how many albums are released daily compared to uh, labels and every day there's an independent record coming out somewhere. Ooh, I don't know. I think um, being independent, well, being independent, being an in independent artist, it's, it's a lot of money to spend to release songs. So I, I think having a label, um, I think I could be wrong. I think having a label behind you, marketing you, helping you, can save you some time because they have the tools and for that instead of me trying to dig through everything and doing everything myself. It's good to have a team behind you. Um, yeah, that's a little fun here. If you had to pick three or four bands... Any band in the world, live or dead, doesn't matter. If you had to pick any four bands to tour with at different times, what would they be? Okay, Green Day, Bon Jovi, B Billy Idol, and I would have to say Elvis Presley because he's the king of rock and roll. So I ho I wished, but you said alive or dead, so. Yeah. And you were with all alive. 
Except the last one. <laughs> what was the last one? Elvis Presley. Oh, yeah, the king. The king. All right, so if you're viewing today, you can ask if you got any question you want, like I said. Um, or me, but usually I don't know how to answer my own question, so I'll have to always do it. So. Okay. Thank you, Lo- Lona. She said, love this awesome chick. You rock, Sabrina. Thank you. We take a lot of these days, Sabrina. You know, and like, look at the radio. Like, my first time I ever played you, I had people actually wanting to play you in the mall. I had somebody <laughs> send me a message. Say, do you have a CD? Well, I don't think she has a CD. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's I said, being fun. with a label can help a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Like for me, it's it's more about pop. Like it's not always the talent anymore. Yes, you're very talented. But I know a lot of bands that are talented, but they got all the fame in the world because they are liked by fans. They. This is what I think, and what my family or my parents always say. Come out with the people. Word of mouth goes around faster than anything. So if people like you and the labels hear that they like you, they're not going to say no. They're going to say, there's people that want you. Let's ma- try to make it work. Yeah, it's... now I can just see. And the hat was in my way. <laughs> If you have any uh, questions, please ask me. (laughs) And also, we could have finally announced this. This has been in the works for a couple couple weeks. That Ottawa is going to have a major, major benefit concert as well. And it's with a band that's a beat that knows quite well. They have asked her to be a co-star of the show. Not an opening act, a co-star. This is to help stop cyberbullying and to stop domestic violence. This is can a I? green day. That's yes. the consider- <laughs> You see that? You see that? And she she green will be on stage with the Green day. Green day. <laughs> green day. Green day, green. <laughs> we get it, we green get it, we get it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, this is a Dreams fun question. <laughs> Another fun question. Okay. If you walk into a diner. Okay. Oh, okay. What would you order off the top of your head? Burger and fries. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm I'm very healthy. <laughs> we're uh, well, also, we're looking at uh, who other than Green Day and Bon Jovi? Because we have uh, deciphered in the last few shows who you like. Um, <laughs> who's, who's another musician or legend? In the music world, that you would like to have a sit down meal with in this talk shop. Just talk. Um, can I say two two people? Yeah, you can say whatever you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would. I'm gonna say some female artists now. So I'm gonna say Michelle Branch and Avril Lavigne, definitely. I think uh, I think Avril would be fun because she's like this punk. She used to be this punk rocker, so it would be cool. And Michelle Branch was one of the first artists I sang when I was very young, so she got me into like singing and stuff. But yeah, so I gr- I grew up with them at a very young age. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I use the cell phone charging gear. I like this. Um, also, 
labels really push for you to change your music styles or to change your two efforts or even change your image. Yeah. Um, what would you take on how they portray that? And how would you like them to portray that? Uh, yes, this is the same question. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, in my opinion, as an artist, I like to, well, how can I say this without being mean? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I think a label, when, when they discover you as an artist, should keep you the way you are when they discover you because you have made, um, you have succeeded in that genre of music and you have gained followers. If they change you, in any way, they have to do it in a way that the artist doesn't lose their supporters because it can be a, a, a fast change and they might not like it. So for me, I, I don't want to change. I love what I'm doing and I work very hard to stick to rock because I've had people tell me I should change and stuff and I don't want to. So I'm going to stick to my guns on this one. But for some artists... They might say, okay, you're, you're, you're a good pop singer, but I think you'll be better as country, just because they might have that, that tone in their voice. But... Well, in the case of Nickelback, in the case of Nickelback, <laughs> they say you're a country. Oh. And back in back around 93, 94, they were known as Trailer Hitch. And they were probably... I think of them as a hard rock band, so... Exactly. Yeah. But that's exactly what happened. That uh, a certain person we realized that they could sing other types of music, but maybe you should switch genres. But uh, but another thing is, if a label does come to you and asks you to change in, a, in any way, ask them why is it that you want me to change. Always find out because you don't yeah. want to change and then, and then go through all the three years doing it. So, but, but there are people out there who are signed who did what the label did and then they got back to what they love. So sometimes you don't really have a choice. But honestly, mm -hmm. I'm fighting to stay the way I am. Hope that answered your question. And Probably. Does, um, <laughs> another example would be Taylor Swift. She started as Southern Country. Yes, she did. Now it's South Country, like totally part of the country. And now she's getting into more of the Miley Cyrus pop. You think so? I don't well, think so. The sound, the sound. I think she's just going her way. I think she did a very good uh, well, change. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not insulting her. It's a great job. It's a great job. It's just the way she's changed so much. I I know what you mean, but I don't hear the Miley sound. Well, no, not, the, not Miley per se, but that genre. Oh. The, 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 the screw you attitude. Oh, screw you, attitude? Definitely. I, I hear that. Definitely. Uh, look what you made me do, Pooh's all that. If there's anyone that wants to ask a question or two or three or four, you shoot. If you just like to view the two people on the screen, you can do that too. And you if you're it. joining the, if you are joining the video, please let us know you're here too. Okay. And sh and also share the video if you would like to, please. All right. So. Um. Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah. Yes, with stock. Big thing in the 60s. Yes. If you had to re reinvent it, 
Reinvent it. Ooh. Who would you have as seven headliners? I have to name that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> seven? Okay. Green Day? Well, one, for, one for each date. So, Green Day, Bon Jovi, Avril, Billy Idol, Kelly what? Clarkson. Wait. Yeah, Kelly Clarkson. Why not? Um, <laughs> All American Rejects. And simple plan. Oh, yeah, nice. I love all, all American rejects. Yeah. Yeah. They're, I don't you even know, know if they know. have any new stuff out, but anyway. Where would you think Pink would fit in there? Yeah, Pink would I think would. I to totally forgot about Pink, but I put Kelly Clarkson in there, but Pink would definitely be in there. So make it eight days. Um, oh, oh, we're yeah. getting people. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Hi, Kristen. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> anyway, so if you have any, any questions, please ask me anything. <laughs> I don't even get that privilege. <laughs> no, you can ask DJ Mike anything. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I put that disclaimer. I got disclaimer. <laughs> All right. So, um, what's your total opinion of uh, online video? And the way pretty much it's really stepped up and taken it over. It's even trying to take over the social media apps. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, I do this Spotify. I still yeah. busy, obviously. But you're taking a look at like online radio stations that really promote you as much as, or as more as you would expect. Mm -hmm. And deep down, there is no way you could say. That Spotify or iTunes can give you as much publicity as online radio stations. Which right. Yeah. Um, well, since I I do contact college radio stations, university radio stations, also online radio stations, I I see that um, it has taken me far because there's no way I can get on mainstream. And getting your songs on iTunes, getting them sold, um, you you need a team to market you so people know to go buy it. So I think if anybody's an artist out there watching this, go to online radio. They play your songs more than mainstream, I think, because you can go online and hear all these new bands, but mainstream every hour they're playing the same hit song over and over again i'm not saying it's a bad thing i'm just saying uh, an on, an online radio station will take your music and play it a mainstream wants a manager or a talent scout or a label to have to submit it to them but online station you just send it in and if they like it they play it immediately that there is no like going through steps well that's just my experience yeah, I like mean, like online stations do not worry about the copyright issue um, because then you've ever said you have a copyright issue with the station. Um, I know I would talk to a few friends that had them, and for over two years they even have a copyright on the station, nor did they have a license to run the station. So, <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> So that helps you in a way. Yeah, definitely. They can't charge you because you can go out and live for, for a fraud. <laughs> you don't want that, though. No. And, like, personally, I can say this. The Jungle really represents a lot of independent music. Over the last six months, I have, anyway. Um, a lot of it's due because of Looney Man introducing me to all these artists including yourself. Mm -hmm. um, 
Like, before you I imagine, I didn't even realize independent music was as big as it is. It's in the underworld of music. Mm. Underground, like, independent music is in the underground railroad. You know, because you guys are pioneering a whole different genre. Well, yeah, of course. From what's on the radio? Oh, yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't care what anyone says. You could have a, a labelized rock artist, an independent rock artist. The independent rock artist sounds a lot better. I'm not talking about the cheap, the cheap sounds out of a van. No. You're talking, talking about efforts, good quality. Effort. And yeah. the effort. Like, you, once you get signed to a label, you become complacent. You say, I'm signed. How much more work do I need to do if there's something to get signed and, and stay signed? You know, the yeah. label, the label bosses are the ones that give me the fans, not me. That's how they get. That's how they feel. And I feel that as an artist, you still need to step up and you need to be aware of what you're doing. And you All the time. You, and even though you get signed, you still need to realize your music is what feeds you. At the end of the day, the people running the label are not the sounds on your album. They're the ones promoting the album, but they're not the ones singing on it. We hope. Of course. Um, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <We hope. laughs> you never know what they do in the editing room. Um, that's for what you might do. That's funny. Um, I was going to say earlier. Music really needs the inspiration of independence. Because, especially nowadays, you got Ozzy Osbourne retiring soon. you got Bon Jovi retiring in a couple of years. Green Day will probably have the last run soon. Taylor Swift, well, she's got a few years left. Madonna, she's basically done. So that's why he's looking at her. And the Last, yeah. Um, I, I know that one, yeah. We're looking at how the independent artists really need to... Uh, it's like in passing the torch. It's the next generation. When those retire, when those retire, you go yeah. down, something that go up there. And it's a cycle. And it's like life. You have children, they grow up. They have children, they grow up. You know, it's a cycle of life. That's the same thing in the music industry. And mm -hmm. the way the labels are going, they say, well, you have to do this and this right now. And they say that's killing the independent circuit. That is why they're coming up with this idea to step up and make this easier set up for you. And not just you, obviously, but to all the independents. Out there. Right, of course. And instead of having to go to open mic nights like, every single week, or having to go to sing, like going to dive, dive bars and yeah. do shows like for 10 people, hoping one manager shows up. That is what this is about. And they're saying that all you have to do is prove that that's you on that voice. So even if you did a Skype call and sang on Skype to a manager or a label head, you were pretty much dead signed. Because... Especially now, starting next year, there's going to be like 40 more labels coming up just in the United States. Uh, independence, you mean? Independent labels? Oh. or Labels. Big well, you ones. Got, you got Chuck you Hogan's coming out. You got Bon Jovi's official one being pumped out there. Oh, oh yes. yes Apple that one. Coming out. So they're all coming out. Um, even the... Uh, and they went out there to deal. She's making her own label next year. So we're having them big, big names. Everybody else but has her own production agency. I don't think she yeah. produced records yet, but she's on the way. You know, um, so Taylor Swift, I give her two years to have her own label. Yeah, oh, I'm sure she will. Especially that she hasn't like being told what to do anymore. Because remember, the old Taylor's dead. Um, <laughs> Look what you made me do. <laughs> yeah, look what you made me do. Yeah, I I know. Know. yeah. Um, 
But honestly, I'm feeling that uh, you on the rise quickly, and that's good for you because of the effort that you put in. Um, let's look at uh, there's a band out there, the Truth. Mm-hmm. They're huge now. I saw them 2003, I think. They opened for uh, Big Sugar. Okay. And you see these guys come on stage. Their drum set was crooked. Like bent out of shape. Their amp, the front of the amp, the speaker of the amp was coming apart. And the lead singer comes on stage and goes, we just got into town like 10 minutes ago, man. And that was the truth when they first started. Wow. So that to me is a little embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but things um, happen. Look, look where they are now. Definitely. An example, Metallica. They just did a show in Edmonton here about a month ago. Um, Anyway, it was epic. I was say I'll say that much. Uh, but the way he said it at the end, he said their first concert, they had a TV screen. Not a big screen. Really? A TV screen on stage. That's all they could afford. Well he said that 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 can happen at the beginning of your uh, at the right, beginning of your see. Yeah. He said they had to play in some cheap ass motel storage garage. He says, and the way they paid them, they gave them a free shower every day. Oh. That was their payment for playing <laughs> at that place. So oh. They felt, they, felt, they felt used. Oh, I um, see. And the story behind this is now Metallica owns that motel. Oh, nice. Right when they got their money, they went and bought the owner and said, don't worry, we'll give you a few showers every night. <laughs> like, to me, like, I think, like, my example to this is even if you're a label or an independent, as a promoter, the promoter needs to treat you like an artist. Yes, I, I agree with that. Yeah, because the way Metallica got treated at that motel, they should got paid. They're singing songs, you get paid. Right. Like, for example, like, someone does a, a concert at Columbia, they're not going to get free hamburgers payment, they're going to get a check. And then they'll get free food on top of that. Yeah. But free food's not a paycheck. No. Uh, all right. So, anything like, is there anything that is on your mind with music or outside the music world? Um, I'm just thinking about Green Day. Of course you are. I'm just wearing this. Actually, outside the music world, well, you know, I have squirrels. <laughs> yeah, we know that. I think, I think everybody I knows that by now. <laughs> If you follow her Instagram, you'll definitely know. Yeah. Or her Facebook. If you follow me, you, you know I have squirrels. They're not my squirrels, but I call them my squirrels. But there's one squirrel that comes up to me all the time, so I call him my squirrel. You really like that hat, don't you? I guess so. Yeah. All right, if there's any questions you want to ask, please ask away. I know people are watching. I can see. Mm. Hmm. All right. Anyway, um...
sponsorships. Okay. The way you feel, how do you feel when sponsors, yes, they pay you to sponsor and but how would you how do you feel that they control a lot of your uh, promotions? Example, if you're on a bus going to Vancouver and your Pepsi is a logo as a sponsor, your logo's gonna be bigger than yours. Mm-hmm. You know that's like do you agree that they should do that? Or? No. Like, uh, are uh, you saying if their logo is bigger than my, yeah, than my logo? Example, example for Pepsi. Like, see, like, you take the how to do the logo. He wants to say Pepsi presents you, for example. They have the logo Pepsi bigger than your logo because it presents. These things tell them you're here. And oh, if it's that way, yeah, it's fine, I guess. I didn't say, I'm going to open this anyway. <laughs> um, as long as it doesn't cover my name. Oh, covered. I think that's a crime. I should be covered. Oh. Okay, no crimes, please. <laughs> All right, so we've covered the other bases here. Um. How would you, how would you react to be the OP guy for you? And what kind of habits would you need to change once you are that tour? Oh, you well, I would love being an opening act. What habits I will have to change? I don't really know. I'm pretty organized. And uh, when I get to work, I get to work. There's no time wasted. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, but the maybe the only thing I have to get used to is pressure, being under more pressure than than I am daily, because you know I have no pressure right now. Being used to having a team and being under pressure, but I know I'm gonna have supportive people around me, so I should be fine. All right. Um... Like I said the other day, like, this is the first time I'm doing it. Well, technically the second time I'm doing a Facebook live interview. Yeah. Yesterday did not really work. Yesterday work, didn't work, turn work. out right, so we're doing it again. Hopefully it turns out today. Um, I think it will. Yeah. Knock on wood somewhere. Um, knock on wood somewhere. <laughs> knock go. on the uh, head. <laughs> here we go. There's no wood up here. I'm joking. Um, also, the jungle is going to represent an independent uh, concert next year. And we still have you on the list. We just don't know where you're going to fit in as a headliner or not. Um, pretty much, uh, it's just a fun little thing to help independent acts get noticed. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's like an independent Woodstock. Oh, nice. That's basically what it is. And it's taught indie rocks a lot. Yep. So like I explained before, what it is, is you're going to have opportunity to perform with headliners. For example, it'll be a headliner, side artist, headliner, a label, a non-label, a label, non-label, label. That way, it's all alternating, and the label heads and the label artists tend to see the independent acts. That way, if they see something that needs to be fixed, they can talk to them and think, wow, let's give them a contract. Uh, contract. They will. You know, um, we yeah, want small oppor- to do stuff like this. Yeah, it's opportunity. Like, Tanil does stuff like that as well, but not just big. Um, this is like the biggest open mic in Canada. That's what it is. Oh, I see. And, yeah, but there's headliners involved. There's real fans that buy tickets. Um, there'll be merchandise. There'll be all that. Um, like, how many independent artists do you think 
We had to show up to that like if you were controlling it. I think a lot of people will want to get into that opportunity if that's what they're looking for. Is that if that's how far they want to pursue? Yeah. And then we talk about lifestyles. Um, you know, I know this Taylor Swift for example. I don't know what the exact number, but she probably makes about ten million dollars a year, easy. Um. How do you discipline yourself not to change your habits? Habits in what way? Like? Um, instead of buying a Big Mac, you go buy a McDonald's. Hmm. If you understand that. Instead of buying a burger, you buy the whole damn company. You know? <laughs> that's, I, don't, that's... I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough question, actually. Hey, for example, Justin Bieber. Before he was nine, he was a decent kid. He loved mm-hmm. his mom, took care of her, and all that. He gets signed. He, I think he needs a baseball bat upside the head. You know, he's turning to be a goof. He's done drugs. He's done, she's played with guns, he's been drinking, he has so many driving violations. He's urinated inside, inside restaurants. I know, I've heard that. I, I think, I think, stuff. I think he needs help. I think there's something wrong with him. I, I think mentally he needs somebody to talk to. Because this is not yeah. normal for somebody to do something like that. So. You know, um, the money again went to his head. Um, the Beatles, for example. The Beatles, when they came to America, they were rich. They yeah. come to America, they yeah. get so much money. They are LSD. Yeah. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds comes out. Um, you saw a waste, a great talent, mm-hmm. with their way with drugs. And without that money, that dr- those drugs aren't there. Um, how would you contain yourself? How would you look at the perspective in your eyes to keep the way you are? How... How do I stay focused, yeah. you mean? How would you how would you make yourself stay there when you are? Um, remember where home is. Stay grounded. Um, know know the real people who are around you and always stay close to the people that were with you from the beginning. And be careful when you make new friends, of course. Don't don't change because you think you have to stay who you are if you can but sometimes fame changes you it can for some people but uh for me i just want to stay who i am i don't want to change you know i just want to be me and be myself i because if i if anything changes for me i know my family and friends are gonna hit me and be like, why are you doing that? We always have that uh, the family the family is the the shield too. Um, good parents will always, always keep you out of that. Um, yeah, well, they, they I think parents should help you with that stuff, yeah. And then we're going to just have a connection issue there. No, still there. I think we're very doable now. I know I'm not that tired. This is where I look. <laughs> I, um, I know. I know. I'm just, yeah. Um, 
And we talked about mental wellness yesterday, but we're not going to go too far into that again today. But No, we don't want to go too far into that. I feel like the mental wellness part is a much needed thing to represent and to bring to the table. Um, we also feel that we need to uh, eliminate any mental illness that we can. Um, I know what we're doing right now. We're so far behind that. We might not even have it in my lifetime or yours, but I feel someday mental wellness will not be a mental issue at all. If people are kinder to each other and help each other, probably pe- people won't be as down and depressed because this world is um, cruel. Yeah. Um, as we just uh, discussed before, paradise comes in a place is to wake people up about mental illness. That, that's, about- that's why I co-wrote that song because I, I haven't heard a song about depression in a while, and I said, I think I need to put something out there. And a lot of musicians lately have come out and admitted they have mental illness. I think musicians, because they are sensitive, because they write so much about themselves and what they go through, I think, uh, and, and with the pressure and everything, I think they get it. Um, they get it. That that's what oh, I hear. Yeah, they do get it. And you know, Keisha, Keisha a minute on a Facebook Live conference Keisha, yeah. three weeks ago, two three weeks ago, that she has suffered from it. Of course, I think I, I, I suffered from it. I could I could tell from her praying song. That that she had depression, just just the way the song started. And it was just yesterday alone. Yesterday, Adele admitted she has left the music scene due to mental illness. Said when she was on that stage, she admitted it yesterday. Said her doctors and her sat down. I didn't see that. Wow. It was on BBC. Um, it is news. Um, I actually been watching that lately. I don't know why I'm not British, but it, there's good shows on there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but I'm surprised I didn't see it on Google or anything. A- anyway, I'm sure it'll come around. Um, she said she might be on tour again next year if she feels better. I, I wonder what uh, hit her. Like... Because some something had to happen. But it's mean fans. Um, she does have a weight issue. She's admitted that. She's had stuff thrown at her on stage. Although, speaking of that, this is a kind of a funny story, you know? But her voice is just amazing, though. It is. But, and is it the cruel world? Yeah. Um, but we do have a funny story about um, they stepped foot on stage. Okay. We had Nickelback here when they were. We had Nickelback about ninety eight, ninety nine. Come here. They were still in the younger days. <laughs> they were singing whatever song, and he get a tag in some cowboy boot. So we had him. So we got a cowboy boot at him. So he grabs the boot and says, It's my size, where's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good so, comeback. Because yeah. he says, What else are you supposed to do? Can it solve something? <laughs> That's a very good comeback. Hey, that fits me. Great, thank you. <laughs> the other one. Do you have the other one? <laughs> Um, and what people don't realize, but most musicians, especially the ones you see nowadays, like Jack Hoger comes from a city 
a town, a town of 1,200 people. Mm -hmm. He's from a town where you see tractors on Main Street. Tractors. When you go to someone, that's what they, because it's a, it's a farm town. You go shopping, they, they go shopping, driving their tractors. Oh, wow. Yeah. They have, uh, right on downtown, you know how like, most towns have like, crosswalk signs for kids? This one is a crosswalk sign with a cow warning. Watch out for cows. That's how country they go. So, <laughs> so <laughs> wow, and, uh, that's amazing. Brian Adams. Brian Adams comes from a small town in Thunder Bay. Thunder oh, Bay, really? Your commute in Thunder Bay. It's a colony he comes out of. He was okay. actually a Mennonite. He was a Mennonite. Cool. Yep. He did not make that public. So if he's watching, yeah, I just made it public for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think he minds. No, he doesn't care. He told me that. In, he told me that in, in a bar one time. So I'm fine. <laughs> um, also, Ozzy. Ozzy comes from a small town in, in London, in England. Mm, cool. Sure. Um, you know a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know Ozzy. I don't know why I'm yelling. I think you're talking too much. Um, it is late. For you. Yeah, I know. But still, it's a lot. It's 552. It's 552. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I just do all that I love to do. Like, even when I'm DJing on the radio, I yawn. Yeah. We're just yawning. Oh. So, before we end, if there's any message you want to give to any independent upcoming, uh, if someone trying to get into the business, what's the best advice you can give them? Um, go with your heart. Believe in yourself. Don't give up. Have faith. Don't let anybody stop you. There will be people out there saying that it's going to be tough. It's not good for you. You can't do it. Scrap that. Push that away. Do it because you love it and go for it. Because you are the one that's going to make it happen. Not those people trying to bring you down. You have to fight them. Push them. Because they're, they're out there. You're going to get a lot of people coming to you. So you just have to be strong. But if that's what you really want, go for it. Yeah, I keep looking over there. Just, I'm trying to catch a damn moth. The moth in this house. <laughs> Aww, it's a cute little mothy. So they get on your clothes. And hey, you hey the, the squirrel that I fed today almost came into my screen room. And my mom's like, as long as he doesn't get into the house, because that's going to be a problem. I'm like, oh, maybe the, the squirrel will find my bedroom and have a nap. <laughs> we'll destroy like, him. We'll destroy him. Yeah. All right, so okay, so without any further ado, I want to thank Sabrina for that for this opportunity. Thank you. I want to thank the same people at Pepsi that gave me the sponsorship. Um, I they know they heard me yesterday plead and beg for sponsorship, and as you notice, I got it. <laughs> Really? I love oh, show, Pepsi. Yes. Pepsi rules, man. <laughs> now, keep in mind, we've had Pepsi for the States. This is the first time my interviews have been sponsored by Pepsi. Um, oh. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be live on the radio soon. 
with another interview. And you don't have to stare at this all day. Um, <laughs> you can stare at that one all day. But, but this one, no. uh, <laughs> oh, you know, you're easy to stare at me. Trust me on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if there's anybody watching, have any last minute questions they want to ask, please ask away. And the way you can view this, I need to have a double 7743 on Facebook. Or you can go to YouTube eventually on some video follows YouTube channel. Or you can talk to your on jungle773.com. Remember, later tonight, I will be doing a tribute show to WWE Hall of Famer, Bobby DeBrady, who sadly passed away mm -hmm. last night. He was a, he was a guy, as a child, I loved hating him. You love him as a person, but he had a character that annoyed you on TV. That's what he did as a comic. <laughs> he annoyed people, and he made you laugh two hours or three hours on every pay-per-view. He went to WCW. I cried because Canada didn't get WCW like that. And so, mm -hmm. and, um, that's why I say no. Thank God for WWE Network. I never go get WWE Network, and you will never lose Bobby the Brain. He did. You can watch him. every single episode he was in is live at your fingertips. Aww. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, so long. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys.